faithful. You are a gracious God. You are faithful. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, God. And we just thank you for that. And because of the goodness of sending your son to die for us, so we can come freely, we can enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praises, oh God, because the veil was rent in two, so we can worship you, we can praise you and bless your holy name. Father God, I pray, Lord God, Lord, just thinking about the times that we are living in tonight, God. I said in Ephesians 5, 15 says, see then that you walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Part of God tonight, I want to say, Lord, that you will bless us as Apostle Raul comes over again with that teaching on the gifts, gifting. Lord God, that you will open up our spirit to understand what our gifts are. And each and every one gifts are unique to themselves. God bless us with gifts. Hallelujah. Lord, and I pray that we will know the gifts that we have and we will function in them, Lord. We will shine in our gift. This is the time. We're living in the last days, oh God. And we must realize that, Father. Mm -hmm. And enough of warming the chairs and benches and whatever. We must launch out and do what you call us to do. So, Father God, open our understanding tonight as he teaches us, oh God. And I pray that you will bless the worship to God. Oh, Savior, as we worship you, that our praises, oh God, will be a sweet aroma in your throne room tonight, God. Have your way tonight. Let your presence fill us tonight, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All your sisters. Amen. Amen. I just want to welcome the Holy Spirit in this place tonight. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place sweet holy spirit Thou art welcome in each room. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in each room. Omnipotent Father, of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in its room. Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. 
fill us with your power. Live inside of us. For you're the living water. The never dying fountain. Your comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Hallelujah tonight, dear God. We just welcome the Holy Spirit because we are in your presence tonight, dear God. And we ask you to fill us. Fill us with your power and live inside of us tonight, dear God. This is holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here, and where he is is holy. This is holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here and where he is is holy. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. So let's just pray. Jesus now, for we are standing in God's presence on holy ground. These are holy hands, we are lifting up holy For the Lord is here, and where he is, is holy. These are holy hands. We are lifting up holy hands. For the Lord is here, and where he is, is holy. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there's angels all around. Let's just pray. Jesus now. Oh, we are standing. God's presence on holy ground. Dear God, tonight we are standing in your presence on holy ground. Dear God, tonight. Hallelujah. 
Jesus, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. No one can worship you for me. Here is my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Jesus, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. No one can worship you for me. And I will not keep silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Here is my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Jesus, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me. Hallelujah. No one can worship you for me tonight, dear God. We place you. At the highest place for you, at the great high priest, we place you, Lord, high above all. And we come to worship at your feet. We place you tonight, dear God. We place you, we place you tonight, dear God, at the highest place for you. At the great high priest, I place you, Lord, high above all else. And I come to worship your feet. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Oh, the 
blood that Jesus shed from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches in the highest mountain and it flows through the lowest valley oh the blood that Jesus shed from day to it can never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows through the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed from death to death. It will never lose. It's for hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other font I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on through the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. When my way grows dread, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my call, hear my cry, hold my hand, lest I fall, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me on. When the darkness appears, precious Lord, linger near. When the day is past and gone, at the reach Stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, 
Lord, lead me on. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired. I am weak, I am warm. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. And that's our prayer for tonight, dear God. We ask you to take our hand, take each of us hand, precious Lord, and lead us to the light there, God. So tonight, over to you, Pastor Rose. Thank you, Lord. What we saw is that the devil does not want a believer to operate in the gifts of God because it is the gifts of God that become a threat. That, that is the supernatural ability. That is the ability of God implanted in a man. And I, I showed you... Uh, the gifts of Moses, then we saw what is what is the gift of God. It's the gift of God enables one to operate and function beyond their human abilities and intellectual for the glory of God and for the purposes of God. God advances his kingdom and fights the devil by giving authority and gifts to men. If you want to, if you want to be, if you want to survive, you need to be gifted by God. You need to receive authority from him. You need to receive power from him. So every believer is eligible. Every believer is gifted. Hallelujah. We see that in the book of Ephesians. That when he ascended on high, he released gifts to men. That's why he said, I am going to the father and it is better that I go so that the helper can be sent. And the gifts that are released on us is through his spirit which is called the Holy Spirit. So through the Holy Spirit, the gifts are released. And to, tonight we are going, we are on the New Testament. I showed you from the Old Testament how the servants of God operated in different gifts. But when we come to the New Testament, we realize that we, we are supposed to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has distributed, one spirit has distributed different gifts in the body of Christ. But what I told you that operating in the gifts of God or the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not easy because the enemy attacks you. And we spoke about the several categories of attacks through which the enemy attacks a believer when you start to use your gifts. So many believers operated in the gifts, but when they started to use their gift, they were attacked in several ways, mentally, physically, emotionally. And they some of them thought, okay, my gifts are of no use. Some of them thought I, maybe my gifts, it's, it's not gifts, it's just my mind. And through such attacks, that the conviction of the gifts they have was damaged. So they stopped using their gifts. Some of them don't use their gifts because they don't know that they have gifts. They don't know that the, that the Bible has, has uh, says that every believer is gifted. Every, every believer in the body of Christ. If you are a part of the body of Christ, you, the, the head has given you a function. The head has given you the gift. Jesus has gifted you. Every person in that measure of the grace given to them is gifted. Peter talks about it. We will come to that at the end. Romans, the book of Romans talk about it, that you need to minister to each other. If the gift of teaching, then through the gift of teaching. If, the, if through the gift of encouragement, then through the gift of en encouragement. So in the body of Christ, the apostles have said, that people need to minister to each other with the gifts that they have in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Do we understand that? But the devil attacks people when they start using their gifts. He does not want the people, he, he wants a believer to stay as an average believer operating in the flesh, operating in the realm of the physical. He does not want a believer to step into the supernatural. But God wants to tell you that you have to work in the supernatural. You have to work in the spirit and walk in the spirit so that you will have a dominion 
over the kingdom of darkness and walk in victory. So that's why God wants every believer, every believer to walk and function in the supernatural ability of God. That only happens through when God gives you the gift. Hallelujah. Okay. So let us start off. Where I ended was the fourth category of attack. So I ended on the attack. So one of the attacks that the devil, that the enemy will launch against a person who is using the gift is, the enemy will challenge you and try to copy, copy to show you that what you do, they can also do. There will be a competition. Okay, well, what you are doing, already we are doing. There is nothing unique. That, that is where I ended last meeting. That was the last category of the attack against the gift of God in your life. So what, what did I say? They will launch an attack against you to show you what you are doing, we can also do. And we see that in the book of Exodus, chapter number 7 and chapter number 8, when you read that. I don't have time. Last time we saw that already. Where when Moses went and he threw the rod, it became a snake. The magicians and sorcerers of Pharaoh came. We can also do it. They threw the rod. It became a snake. When Moses went and he struck the water, it became blood. It says that the magicians and the sorcerers, the wise men of Egypt, did so with their enchantments, copied what Moses was doing. And Pharaoh said, Moses, you are doing something that we also do. So I will not let you go. When Moses went and strike the waters of Egypt, frogs came out of the waters of Egypt. They also brought for frogs from the waters of Egypt. So believers, listen to me very carefully. You have to understand that the way Holy Spirit operates through you, there is a counterfeit that exists of the same things in the demonic kingdom. And that is where discernment is needed. Now, to, to bring a very, very profound division, Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the Church of Corinthians. Okay? Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the Church of Corinthians because when you will look at the Church of Corinthians, uh, that is where Apostle Paul started to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit to them. Now, you got to realize that Apostle Paul was not talking to them about the gifts of the Holy Spirit because they were growing in the Lord. But Apostle Paul was talking to them about the gifts of the Holy Spirit because he was making a distinction through the doctrine of the word to make a segregation between the gifts of God and the gifts that they used to operate when they used to worship idols. So when they used to worship idols, they used to operate in those gifts. When they become, became Christians, they started to operate in some gifts, but there was no distinction through which spirit that they are operating, through which spirit they are operating. So we will come to that and then I will, I will elaborate and start to tell you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that you may realize what gifts that you carry. Okay, so first of all, let me start off with 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Now look at the emphasis of this chapter that Apostle Paul, the letter that Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Corinthians. It says now concerning spiritual gifts. Gifts is in italic fonts. In, the, in your Bible, in my Bible, italic fonts, like, like the slant fonts. That means gifts was not there. It was included to give context to what in English, to what he is writing. It says now concerning spiritual gifts, remove gifts. It becomes now concerning spirituality. Because these guys, the, 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 the people of Corinthians were spiritual people. You know, spiritual people not not about the things, the spirits, the spiritual things of God, but the spiritual things of the darker side of the enemy. They were spiritual people. So Apostle Paul is, first of all, uh, making it clear that I am talking to you about spirituality. What he's talking, he says, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Okay. So, they were what? 
carried away by the spirits of idols. They were carried away by the spirit of other gods. And it says, however you were led. So they were led. Like the Holy Spirit leads you, the spirit of the idols were leading them. So he is making a differentiation now. Do we understand the scripture? However you, you were led by them, the demons were leading you. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Are we together? So he is now making a distinction between a demonic spirit and the Holy Spirit trying to teach them and teach them the difference because they are operating in the gifts that look like the Holy Spirit through other demonic spirits. Okay. Then it says, verse number four, there are diversities of gift. Now look at this scripture. I will read from verse number four to verse number 11 and I, I underline some things if you have a pen. Underline some things that I say to you. Okay. Verse number four to verse number 11. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Underline the same spirit. Underline the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Underline the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God. Underline same God. That is one God, one Lord, one spirit. Okay. Who works all in all. But the manifestation of spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Underline same spirit, please. The word of knowledge, the second gift of the Holy Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. Underline same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit, underline one and the same spirit, one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. How many of you underline those things? How many lines that you have made? How many? Count and tell me. How many lines did you make? There. Hmm? Anyone? How many lines did you make there on the Bible? People are not following my instructions here. Huh? Are you following the instructions? Okay, let it be. So, yes, let it is. How many? Yeah, we are following. It's about seven. But because you can't go one, you can't underline it one after the next in your okay. iPhone. Only in the Bible. Only Sister K. Okay, some of you are doing it. How many times? Seven. Okay, let's take roughly seven times you underline. That the same spirit. So the you got to understand the context and why Apostle Paul is writing the letter. That is what you have to understand. He's, he is writing the letter to emphasize that it is the same spirit, same spirit, one Lord, same spirit, to make it clear that the gifts that God gives is not the gifts that you were operating before when you were led by different spirits. By different spirit. Now there comes the difference. Now many of I, I am I am try I am asking you to do these things because you are fa many Christians fail in discerning the gifts of God and the gifts of the devil. A person may come and say, I am a prophet, I am this, I am that, and he operates in some gifts, and you are fascinated. You start to receive his word. You start to spiritually spiritually feast with him or with her at, at her or his table start to receive the teaching and the doctrines. And that is how multitudes of Christians are now being led to hell by a false doctrine and by doctrine of demons because they cannot discern gifts. 
that's why I'm asking you to lay em listen to me carefully what I'm teaching tonight. How to discern? That is the difference. When a person operates, it will look similar, but you need to have the revelation of, the, of God's word, of God's knowledge, of the understanding of God to discern between a person who is operating by the word of wisdom. Is that word of wisdom from a demonic spirit or is that word of wisdom from the Holy Spirit? Do we understand that? When a person operates in word of knowledge, now many of the people might not know what is word of wisdom, what is word of knowledge, how to differentiate. I will come to that. Is the word of wisdom or word of knowledge from the demonic spirit or is that word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit? Now, the main difference, the main emphasis that Apostle Paul is laying upon in this, in this letter to the Church of Corinthians, he is telling them that the gifts that come from God, it comes from only one spirit. And one spirit, the same Lord, distributes the gifts. There is diversities of giftings, ministries and activities. Three things are there. I don't have time to go into ministry is what I am doing. Ministry, the apostolic, te I am teaching you, that is ministry. When we come on a Saturday or come anytime, come together and pray. We say it's an intercession prayer. That's an activity. When if I, if I, God shows me something and then I speak it, maybe a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, I speak it, minister to someone, that is a gift. So there are diversities of ministration, ministry, activity, and the gifts that is upon a person. But everything is given by one spirit. So if everything is given by one spirit, the vision and the purpose towards which the gift, the ministry and the activity is given is the same. The purpose is the same. What is the purpose? The purpose of the gifts is to reveal Christ to people. And the purpose of the gifts is to lead lead a person to Christ and, and establish a person more and more in his salvation. That, so if there is one spirit, the purpose of the spirit will be the same who distribute several gifts. But in the demonic kingdom, there is no purpose whatsoever. Let me use an example to you. Let me let, so you are studying, let's say you are studying biology. Okay. We, we are a group of students who are studying what? Let's say, let's say we are studying biology. We are in the class and we, we, we are studying biology. And there is only one teacher who comes and spends time with us, takes the book and teaches us every day. Then he checks on us. And because he wants us to be successful biologists or successful in the biotechnology world or successful doctors, whatever. That's why he comes and teaches us. But on the other hand, let's say that there is not one teacher. 15 to 20 different teachers come, come every day. So one teacher says, okay, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. And the next day, another teacher appears. And the next teacher says, oh, no. we, we say, oh, we learned this. He says, no, 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 no. Forget about those things. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. This is, he teaches on a different track. The, the third day, another teacher comes and they teach on a different tra track. So there is no direction. There is not a destination we are going towards. We are all confused. We are learning. We are learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. That is how the people of the age are. That is how Christ, some of the Christians who are deceived have become. They are learning and learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. So, stay with me. So, keep this scripture in mind and keep this what I said. And turn with me. Turn with me to the book of Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter number. Turn with me to Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter number three. Second Timothy chapter number three. Now, now listen to this, what, what, what the Bible is saying now. But know, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. 
for men will be lovers of themselves lovers of money boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy unloving unforgiving slanderers without self control brutal despisers of good traitors headstrong haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away having a form of godliness deny but denying its power but such from such people turn away for this for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins led away led away by various lusts always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that is what i am saying everyone say always learning but never coming to the knowledge of truth everyone say that always learning always learning but never coming to the knowledge of truth why why is why does that happens i will tell you why it happens because because the same teacher is not teaching you different teachers are teaching you the uh, do we understand now the one spirit the only one spirit if he teaches you you will you will have a direction you will have a purpose you will know okay this is the intention of my teacher but if different 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 difference teachers come and impart on you and teach you you are directionless so you, so you are learning many things but you are learning from this and that and this and that and this and that you never come to the knowledge of truth through your learning you never have a purpose hallelujah if you people of god if you are understanding what i am saying say amen hallelujah if you understand that amen. you you have to understand that it's the same lord and if he if he teaches me if he teaches you if he is giving me the gifts giving you the gifts all our gifts will cater to the same purpose it will never happen that i am catering to some other agenda and you are catering to some another agenda if i use my gifts if i am gifted if you are gifted someone else else is gifted when we use our gifts the purpose is to lead people establish people in the doctrine of the word of god lead people to christ that is the purpose of the gifts of god are we understanding listen to me after listening to this teachings you will be able to discern believers you will be able to discern when a person is ministering a gift is it from a demonic spirit or is it from the holy spirit when the the gift is from the holy spirit there will be a direction after you you are ministered with that gift in your life there will be a purpose that will be unveiled after there will be a message through the gift now i will start to talk about those things when we come to the explanation of the of the each gifts of the holy spirit okay nine gifts are mentioned there but there are not only nine gifts there are also other gifts mentioned in other scriptures so le let's not go uh, dive into that but let us understand let us understand that we are living in a generation where christianity christian people are learning and learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth never becoming mature they are still babies oh i am learning this book i am going to this seminar i am doing this i am going to that prophet this prophet that prophet wait 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 are you hearing god for yourself are you being led by the holy spirit are you stable are you consistent do you have victory one of the thing i asked i want to ask people if they say i am doing this i i am doing this course i am doing that course i am doing the prophetic school i paid some dollars there i am doing the divinity div, uh, divinity dig, degree i am doing this course i am this the other the, one one thing you are doing so many learnings one thing i want to ask you in your personal life do you have victory over sin are you walking in victory in your secret life do you have victory over secret sins do you have victory over your flesh to your amazement these people don't have victory over sin don't have victory over flesh but they are learning 
what they are learning they are they are operating in activities they are doing activities but it's not from god it's from different kinds of spirit so that is where apostle paul is teaching the church of do we now understand that scripture a little bit that chapter number 12 what apostle paul is saying same spirit same spirit one lord same spirit again and again he's saying i told you to underline those things uh, for you to have a look how many times he is saying that in the scripture for you to know the emphasis of the chapter why he is writing that letter that part of the letter because the church of corinthians were this People who always want to learn new things, go here and there, go here and there. They are not sort of satisfied by the Bible. So some people say, oh, brother, some pastors tell me, oh, if you, if you, if you want to know, if you have want to have net uh, information about this and about that, you know what? Start watching Netflix. What nonsense. Start, start watching Netflix. Start watching that movie, secular movie. Uh, one of the, you know, once in a meeting, I was praying. And then I said, there is someone in this meeting who is watching horror movies. And because of you are because of you watching the horror movies, I see demons that are upon you, that are tormenting you, that are causing problems in your life. Because those demons that I see around you, I see they came through the horror movies. So I asked, who is that person? No one answered. As if everyone in the meeting was holy. After the meeting got ended, after two days, one of the ladies who was in the meeting called me. She said, brother, how are you? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Praise the Lord. How are you? Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, I was the person who was watching horror movies. I said, okay, why didn't you, <laughs> why didn't you tell? No, 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 I did not tell. But now um, I was the person who was watching horror movies. I said, why do you watch horror movies? She, she, You know what she said? Because I want to learn about demons. I want to learn about how to cast out demons. That's why she watches horror movies <laughs> mm -hmm. going to different kinds of sources the only source i want to make a statement that cannot be changed the only source where you can receive god's wisdom is the word of god and nothing else the bible Amen. the bible the only source is the bible hallelujah amen okay Read your Bible. Read your Bible. When you have experiences, when you have visions, when you have dreams, everything will has to be related to the scripture. Because the Bible was written not through theoretic, theoretical perspective. The Bible was written through experiential perspective. The realities of God was encapsulated in a book. The realities, the mysteries, the things of God were encapsulated in this book. So if I encounter a reality of God through an encounter, through a vision, the Holy Spirit will lead me to come and check that out in the Bible. It will match with the Bible if it was with God. Because all the realities of God are there in this Bible. You don't have to watch a horror movie. You don't have to watch Netflix. I want to know. Uh, uh, some pastors are saying, if you want to understand about end times, go and watch Netflix. What nonsense. On Netflix, it's all the demonic agendas that are being propagated on the Netflix. Now, now this is the reason why Christians are saying, we are learning, we are learning, we know this, we know that. But they never come to the knowledge of truth. Do we understand that statement now? They are always learning, Apostle Paul says. But never come to the knowledge of truth. Okay, let's go ahead with that scripture. Uh, we, we, we were on 2 Timothy chapter number 3. It says, what? Verse number 7. Always learning, always learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. Verse number 8. Okay, now this verse number 8. This is also in relation to. Now these are the kinds of people who operate in demonic gifts. Verse number 8. Now, as Jains and Jambres resisted Moses. Who are Jains and Jambres? Jains and Jambres, remember the sorcerers and the magicians? The Jains and Jambres were the priest or the leader, you can say, of those wise men of Egypt who used to operate in demonic giftings. So, Apostle 
Paul is comparing these kind of people, these kind of believers to who? He says like James and Jambres. So there are Apostle Paul, not in today's age, but in the early church, there were people right in the church who used to operate in demonic gifts. There were leaders, there were pastors, so-called prophets, apostles, who used to operate in demonic gifts. Apostle Paul is talking about such kind of people. He says, now as James and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Yes, also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further and their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We need, how will that, they will be exposed when believers have, believers have no understanding about the word. Once they see a person, uh, a prophet came and said, you know what, I see you on Monday, you drove your red car. And your car was a, a, a Toyota. Man of God, you know everything. And you start to follow the man of God. Because he told you something. That you, you suppose that he, he, he did not know. But God revealed to him. So how will you expose this Jains and Jambres. If an average believer does not have only any knowledge. About discerning the gifts. Whether it is of demons. Or whether it is from the Holy Spirit. Are we understanding that? We will come to that. When I start to speak on the gifts, I will start to tell you the, the differentiation, how to differentiate. And the Holy Spirit is making you very, very simple for you so that you will be able to differentiate between from where the source of the gifts are coming. So it says, now James and Jambres resisted Moses. You know, these people are resisting true servants of God in the church now. It says they resisted Moses and do and and so do these also resist the truth of the word of God. These kind of people, they have corrupt minds. They are disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifest to all. As theirs also was. But what we need to do. What a man of God, what a believer needs to do. It says, verse number 10. But you have carefully followed my faith. This is to Timothy. You have carefully followed my faith, doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly, live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Underline that word and memorize that word. What it says? All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will what? Will suffer persecution. Will suffer persecution. Okay, you don't like that word. Okay, but that's the truth. Let's go ahead. Verse number 14. Verse number 13. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. What it says? Evil men, you say, if God is there, brother, why these false prophets are not destroyed? Bible says these evil men will grow more and more evil, more and more worse. The times are coming. Uh, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Don't look at the evil men. Don't look at what they are doing. What you have to concentrate on? The Bible. Meditate on the Holy Scriptures. Give your life to them. Okay? Verse number 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You see, in all these letters, Apostle Paul's emphasis, foundation, is what? The scripture. So every gift shall be defined by the scripture. Every manifestation of the gift shall be defined by the Holy Scripture, shall be defined by the Bible. All right. Ah, okay. Now I am 
I think now I, I am ready to go to the gifts. Do we now understand the the foundation of what we are going into? The gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, do we now understand that? Remember the example of one teacher and several other teachers. Everyone coming and teaching different things on the same subject. You have no direction. You are going nowhere. But when the same teacher teaches you, imparts on you or the, 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 the knowledge that that teacher has, he will lead you. He will lead you. Remember what Jesus said, I am going to the Father, but the helper will come. So what he is saying is, the syllabus will be taken over by a teacher. But he and me are one. That teacher will talk about me. And bring to your remembrance all the things that I told you. Okay? It's the same teacher. He will talk about me. So, in a church, we know that the church is in sync with the Holy Spirit. The members there are in sync with the Holy Spirit. When I am saying something and the next person who is supposed to speak, let's say there are two speakers or three speakers your that kind of meeting we are having i am saying something uh from the lord and then the next person who comes he continues with that with that flow are we understanding because he is hearing from the same lord he continues with that flow he he comes stands on the stage and says you know what i am amazed because what God told me is the continuation of what this man, what apostle was speaking. And I, I, I believe God wants to continue on this. So he is hearing from the, that is how we know that the spirit of God is flowing. And people are in sync with the Holy Spirit in the church. Are we together? So I'm trying to tell you, Jesus is saying, I taught you, I, I taught you some things, but a teacher is coming. He will continue on those subjects. And he will glorify me. Hallelujah. People of God, can you say an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He will, amen. amen. He will continue amen. on those subjects. Yeah. So it will be a flow. It will be a continuation. So he will glorify me. He will speak of me. He will bring to your remembrance what I told you. He will lead you into all truth. The way he will teach you. So Jesus' teaching ministry was like I am teaching you. I, I, I can speak and teach you. I cannot lead you into the reality of the truth. I can bring to your, your mind to enlightenment by the revelations of the word of God. That is how Jesus taught the disciples. He used to speak. He used to teach them. But Jesus is saying this teacher, will te he has the ability of not giving you theoretical knowledge. But this teacher who is coming has the ability to give you experiential knowledge. He will lead you into the reality of truth hallelujah that's how wonderful the holy spirit is that's how wonderful he is if he wants to teach you if he wants to teach you consecration he will not teach you through theory like i am teaching you i i, I can teach you through the revelation what he will do <coughs> to you <coughs> he will put you in a situation where he will torment, he will allow your flesh to be tormented, your ego, your pride to break down. And then he will, he will let you to be more humble before God. And then he will tell you all these things that happen to you, that is consecration. So he puts you into the reality of the, he lead you into all truth. He is not a theoretical teacher. He is an experiential teacher. He is the he is a he is the teacher teacher of the of the of the practical class. Hallelujah. When you when you learn biology, the teacher will come and teach you the theory. But then you, they will take you to the biology biology laboratory, and they will put a frog before you. They will tell, okay, cut this frog. <laughs> that is experiential knowledge. You learned about the frog, the part of the frog. The lungs of the frog, how the frog breeds, and uh, why you see the the, the 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 neck of the frog bloating and coming back, contracting and expanding, and all those things you you learn that in the in the book. Now in this laboratory, you need to have the experience. So they will give a frog to you, give the equipment, say cut the frog, remove this part of the frog, remove that part of the frog. 
that is experiential knowledge hallelujah okay that is that is any which ways i am talking to you about how the spirit of god moves how the spirit of god moves you know in a in a church that is why apostle paul was writing that letter to the to that church of corinthians because there was a lot of confusion one person will say come and prophesy something the next person who would come and prophesy was completely something different so one person is direct going that direction another person in the church is going in that direction one person is speaking in some kinds of tongues that no one knows another person is speaking in another kind of tongues that no one knows that's why he writes the letter to the church of corinthians to bring order in the church to tell them that you have to operate in one spirit bro, bro. you have to operate in one spirit boys you have to understand that you are still operating in demonic gifts that's why one person is saying something else another person is saying something else he is prophesying something else and they you are saying that we have gifts of of god no that those are not gifts of god if you have the gifts of god there should be order that's why apostle paul writes to them do we now understand so so but so many pastors take that scripture and tell people you should not speak in tongues they don't don't understand the context they take it literally no 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 the bible says don't speak in tongues until you have an interpreter you have to understand to what kind of people apostle paul is talking about the tongues because there was chaos in the church everyone operating in different 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 spirits hallelujah okay so now when we know about what is happening and why apostle paul wrote that letter let's go to the gift of wisdom let's come back to first corinthians chapter number 12 first corinthians chapter number 12 let's see verse number 4 there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are differences of ministries but the same lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same god who works all in all but the manifestation of spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit everyone say the word of wisdom everyone say the word of wisdom <coughs> hallelujah the word of wisdom word of wisdom what is the word of wisdom what is this gift called which is called the word of wisdom okay let me tell you there are several definitions that will be used to explain this word of wisdom word of wisdom is providing god's solution for a physical problem word of wisdom is providing that's the simplest definition god's solution for a physical problem also providing an answer that answers multiple questions word of wisdom is providing one answer for multiple questions okay so many people may come come to me brother i have many question i said okay start to say one by one okay why this why that around 9 to 10 question so okay i said um i think i can't answer so let me pray when i pray i get a word when i tell them that word it answers all the 20 question, questions they have <laughs> that has happened and even before they ask the question once i went to this family in mumbai at a place in mumbai and i went there they did not i said when I, when i entered their house i said let us pray so i started to pray i started to pray and then god gave me some scripture and god gave me a word through that scripture i said this is the word this is what god is speaking to you and then i ministered prayer and all those things and the meeting ended so that couple the husband and wife came i uh, uh, he opened the book the man opened the book and he showed me brother see this questions i had i i wanted to ask you all these questions when you will come but after what you said all these questions got answered what is that the word of wisdom one Hallelujah. one answer can <laughs> one answer can uh, answer the multiple questions so you say one word 
you might think okay we have to sit and solve all the question no god gives you a word a revelation that one word of wisdom can answer all the questions it's i'm telling you it's supernatural so that guy told me i the, the that guy told me uh, i you i don't have to waste your time what you said answered all my questions now i don't have any questions so that is the word of wisdom what is word of wisdom providing god solution for a physical problem or provides an answer to multiple questions it's it's simply the wisdom of god listen to me the wisdom of god which is god's inst instruction to mankind now i have taken a series on wisdom where i have told the definition of wisdom is god's instruction to you that is the word of wisdom i mean you are you you can't solve you can't go through something that is going on in your life you need to have instructions when god starts to in, instruct you you know like i instructed you okay underline this verse that was an instruction when god starts to instruct you that instruction is actually words of wisdom if you apply them you will rise that i am telling you word of wisdom is powerful every believer shall long shall long for that gift word of wisdom powerful gift so what did i say i said word of wisdom is providing god's solution for a physical problem that's the simplest definition i can give you god's solution to a physical problem or 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 provides an answer <clears throat> that will answer multiple question and the wisdom of god which is instruction to mankind which is god's instruction to what mankind okay let me take you there are many 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 examples from the bible of the word of wisdom from the old testament from the new testament but i picked some of them to bring it to this message second kings chapter number 6 let's go there second kings chapter number 6 <clears throat> verse number 1 to 7 Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter number six, <coughs> verse number one to seven. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, "See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man, and let every man take a beam from there, and let us make." there a place where we may dwell so he answered go then one said please consent to go with your servants and he answered i will go so he went with them and when they came to the jordan <coughs> they cut down trees but as one was cutting down a tree the iron axe had fell into the water and he cried out and said alas master for it was borrowed so th that was a that was a genuine problem now the problem is a is a is a simple physical problem that ev that one can face in daily life what happened the iron axe with which they were cutting the tree the axe head fell into the water you know iron has um, the density of iron or the weight of iron the mass of iron, whatever scientifically is it's weighty so it goes down deep in the water how will he bring it out so so to bring it out he did not go to 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 someone who is expert in going deep di diving deep into the water and bringing out things he went to the prophet he went to elisha he said alas master this is the problem i am facing and the axe head was borrowed so i am worried it was borrowed it is someone else's hallelujah okay so the man of god verse number 6 the man of god said now this is word of wisdom okay look at this so the man of god said where did it fall and he showed him the place so he cut off a stick and threw it in there and he made the iron float therefore he said pick it up for yourself so he reached out his hand 
and took it. How can that happen? That is a <laughs> listen to me. That is a word of wisdom. What he did was how that cannot happen scientifically. It was the supernatural of God that made the iron axe head float on the water. Because there is a message hidden in what Elisha was doing. Now this is, the I will come to the differentiation. When you want to differentiate the word of wisdom also is available in the demonic kingdom. Okay? And the word of wisdom is there in God's kingdom. Now, the stick, the piece of wood that he cut and put it in the water signifies the cross of Jesus Christ on which he died. He took, took a piece of wood, a stick, and cut it off and put it in the water. When he put it in the water, the thing that was lost was restored back. Which, which shows when Jesus will, will, will die on the cross, the one which was lost through his death, you who are lost, can be restored back and can be brought back. That is when, when God, listen to me, listen to me. When God allows a person to operate in the gift of word of wisdom, there will be always a revelation in the operation of the gift. There will be always a message and the message will glorify Jesus Christ. And the message will make the person know what Jesus did for that person when we operate in the gift of, of the word of wisdom. Can you say amen if you if you are there? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Word of amen. wisdom. Stay with me. Stay with me. What Elisha did was not normal, was not something magic. What Elisha did was a revelation of what Christ will do. He will restore that which was lost back. He will, he will restore that which was lost. And why? Why Elisha helped this man? Because that man was humble enough to acknowledge, to say, Master, the axe head that fell into the water, it's not mine. It is someone else's. So that signifies how your life can be restored. When you say, Lord, my life that I have, it's not my own. I don't own it. It's yours. And when you acknowledge that, the cross, the finished work of Jesus on the cross will bring back your life out of the depths of water and restore you again. That was the message that was hidden in that, are we understanding that now? In that operation, in that operation of the word of wisdom. Now, let me give you more examples. So, I want to show you when God gives you a word of wisdom and when you put it to use, your gift will always give the message to the person about Christ and about what Jesus did for that person on the cross. When you operate in the gift of the word of wisdom, that, that gift will always glorify Christ. That is one of the things through which you will recognize that the person who is operating in the gift of the word of wisdom is operating through the spirit of God, is operating through the one spirit. Second Kings chapter number four, verse number one. Second Kings chapter number four, verse number one. Now let's see the gift of the word of wisdom in this passage of scripture. Verse number one, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead. And you now know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Now, another daily life physical problem. Another domestic problem of debts. You see, what did I say? The definition of the gift of wisdom is providing God's solution to a physical problem. So she was worried because the, the, the husband died. He took debts. The debtors are coming, going to take the sons because she did not. Pay. she has no money to pay them. So she came with that problem to Elisha. What does Elisha say? 
Now I want to bring you the definition of God's the gift of word of wisdom from this what Elisha is doing. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Now this is how the gift of wisdom is operating. It's locating the hidden solution to a physical problem. A solution to which your eyes were closed. That was, that was with you. That you did not recognize to be a solution to your problem. But when the word of wisdom came. That which was, that which was with you already and which was the solution. Your eyes opened up because of the gift of the word of wisdom. And you recognized, okay, this can solve my problem. There is a message that is revealed in that. It says, the stones which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Amen. The stones. Hallelujah. So, so Princess Knowles got it. I, I understood. She got the revelation. The stones that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstones. The thing, the object or the person you most ignored, that one became the deliverer of Israel. What was there in your house? What is that? Jar of oil. But I never considered it. Because it's, it's a little jar with some oil. That will be your savior. Use it. Word of wisdom. Hallelujah. To, are we understanding until now? Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. I am, I am explaining you what is the gift of the word of wisdom. What is the gift of the word of... Whenever you operate in the gift of the word of wisdom, there will be a message in your gift. There will be a sermon in your gift. There will be a revelation in your gift which will be passed on to the, to the next person when you operate in it. Hallelujah. So that is the gift of the word of wisdom. Now I have taken this sermon on this chapter. 2 Kings chapter number 4. Uh, what Elisha operated in was the seven spirits or the seven dimensions of the spirit of God. The spirit of wisdom and understanding was when he located the hidden solution. He said, where do you have something? She said, uh, the jar of oil. He said, right, that is the savior. Use that. That is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Spirit of wisdom, gift of wisdom. Then the next, he operated in the spirit of, um, spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So I, I, let me not go into that. I have taken a sermon where I think I have explained the seven spirits of God, the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit, wisdom and understanding, counsel and might and knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So after what he does with the jar of oil is counsel and might, knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. If I go into that, um, it will take a lot of time. So, but I am explaining the first gift that Apostle Paul mentions to the Church of Corinthians, the gift of wisdom. And I am showing you to showing to you that go, when the gift of wisdom is operated from the Holy Spirit, not from a demonic spirit, it will always have a message in it that will glorify Christ, that will that will reveal Christ to a person. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Let me show you. Let me show you the gift of wisdom operated by Jesus Christ himself. He, Jesus Christ operated in all the gifts. Our Lord and Savior operated in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So let me show you from the scripture how Jesus operated in this gift of wisdom. Turn with me to Ma Mark chapter number 12. Turn with me to Mark chapter number 12. <clears throat> and verse number 13 onwards Mark chapter number 12 verse number 13 onwards then they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words when they had come they said to him teacher now, now these are the critics who want to trap Jesus to make him say something you know to ask him questions to trap him. I don't know about you, but people have come in my life 
with a intention to trap me by asking me some questions so that they can catch me by some words i don't know the spirit of god gave through me gave some answers to them that i did not get trapped in the words they themselves got trapped in their own words when i answered them that is how the gift of wisdom will give you the supernatural ability to to answer your critics to answer those who want to trap you in questions yes the gift of wisdom so what is happening here verse number 14 says they wanted to catch him in his words verse number 13 verse number 14 says when they had come they said to him teacher we know that you are true and care about no one for you do not regard the person of men but teach the way of god in truth is it lawful to pay taxes to caesar or not shall we pay or shall we not pay but he knowing their hypocrisy said to them so they thought this question that we will throw at him because if he says no you need to pay taxes to you you don't need to pay taxes to caesar they will catch him. Oh, this person is is provoking people not to submit to the government and if he says uh, you know two ways they thought both the ways he answers the question he will be trapped but let's see what jesus did let's see what jesus said but he knowing that hypocrisy said to them why do you test me bring me a denarius that i may see it so they brought it and he said to them whose image and inscription is this they said to him caesar and jesus answered and said to them render to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's hallelujah wow the wisdom that is the gift that is the word of wisdom so the word of wisdom uh, does not only bring solution for people who need help but the word of wisdom can can destroy the critics destroy those those who want to who want to try you need to have the word of wisdom to answer them because many people are searching for words that you will say through which they will say, oh, this person is like this, this person says like this, this person says like that. So he said, Jesus said, whose inscription is this on the crow coin? They said, Caesar. So give to the government what, what you have to pay to the government and give to God what you have to give to God. Because they wanted to trap Jesus saying, oh, we, we won't give to the government, not to the temple and all those stuff. He said, you give to the government what is due to the government and give to God what is due to God. Then let's see another thing here. Then some Sadducees who say they, there is no resurrection came to him and they asked him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and, and dying, he left no offspring. And the second took her and he died, nor did he leave any offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven and her, and so the seven had her and left no offspring. Last of all the, all the women, last of all, the woman died also. Therefore in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as wife. Jesus answered and said to them, are you not therefore mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses in the burning bush passage how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the right. dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. So the word of wisdom is based upon the knowledge of the realities of heaven and of the scripture that Jesus has. You cannot operate in word of wisdom until you are thoroughly grounded in the doctrine of the word of God. In the doctrine of the word of God, in the realities. I told you those who have joined afterwards that the Bible is not a theoretical book. The Bible is a capturing of the realities, experiential realities of the things of God into a book. 
So whenever we have an experience that we call an encounter of vision that has to align with the written experience, experiential book. So Jesus answered them and told them, answered that question so well. Why? Because he knew the reality of heaven. He knew that there is no marriage, no this, no. And he said, God is not the God of the dead. God is the God of the living. So you will not be in the same state with the same relationships in of, as you were on earth, it will not be the same in heaven. The word of wisdom. Hallelujah. Are we understanding the word of wisdom? It's Hallelujah. providing yes. God's solution for a physical problem. Providing one answer for multiple questions. Hallelujah. One answer. Many times, many times it happened. I spoke something and they had questions written on their... They said, uh, I was going to talk with you, Apostle, Af after our meeting, but I do not want to talk because what you said answered all the questions on my paper. So one qu one answer to multiple questions, word of wisdom, that is how word of wisdom operates. Then the God's instruction to man mankind, that is, that is another definition. Then another definition I showed you from the scripture is uh, locating the hidden solution that was hidden from your eyes to the problem. Okay, hallelujah. So now coming to the very, 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 very important part. How to to differenti differentiate between God's gift of the word of wisdom and the demonic gift of the word of wisdom. Because there is the demonic gift of the word of wisdom that operates. You go to a prophet and you say, you know what? The prophet will say, don't say anything. I know what you are going through. I know that you are going through a financial problem from many years. You are in debt. This and that. That is word of knowledge. I will come to the word of knowledge after this. So he has the knowing ability of what already happens. So, but I have a solution for you. He will tell you for seven days in the month of July, this month, for seven days, you take this soap and bath with it for seven days. After you bath with it for seven days, on the seventh day, you visit the sea. And stand by the sea. And on the on the eighth day, you go into the ocean water and bath with it, and you will get your solution. That is that is the kind of word of wisdom that the prophet gave you, which is not from the Holy Spirit. Which is not from the Holy Spirit. Because it nowhere, nowhere gives a message. Now listen to me. I am differentiating, I am giving you three points to differentiate whether the gift of wisdom is from a demonic spirit or from the holy spirit okay for those who have joined afterwards i have given some crucial revelation at the beginning of the meeting how to differentiate okay so you can get the sermon afterwards when i post it and listen to it so uh, you might have a better understanding but listen to me what i'm saying now i am giving you three differentiations three points of differentiation between the demonic gift of the word of wisdom and the gift of the word of wisdom that comes from the spirit of god the first differentiation is the demonic gift of wisdom is a meaningless ritual write it down the demonic gift of wisdom is a what meaningless ritual to bring the desired result whereas god's gift of wisdom has a message and a meaning for the person to reveal Christ to him. Okay? The demonic gift of wisdom is a meaningless ritual to bring the desired result. Whereas God's gift of wisdom has a message and a meaning of the person revealing Christ. A pastor comes to the pulpit and says, by tomorrow, all the men, this uh, the coming Sunday, all the men will wear black, all the women will wear red, and you will come. Because God, had, God has told me, when you wear black and when you wear red, all the marriages will be restored when you do that. There is nothing like that. I mean, the out of the blues, they, it, it is a demonic spirit that gave them a word of wisdom to do some ritual. Meaningless ritual, which has no revealing of Christ. Are we understanding? 
So when you get such words of wisdom to which the Holy Spirit in you and the word of the Bible that you have read does not align to that word of wisdom, they are operating by a demonic gift of the word of wisdom. Because the demonic gift of the word of wisdom is what? Is a meaningless ritual only to get a desired result. Yes, but God's gift is not only to produce something that you desire, the result that you desire. God's gift of the word of wisdom has a message revealing Christ to the, to the person. Are we together until now? Hallelujah. Amen. After you, you have thoroughly gone through the series that I am teaching now, you will be able, 100%, if you, if you get it right, you will be able to very easily discern between the gifts of demonic spirits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, stay with me. So that is the first differentiation I want to give you. The second differentiation is, the second differentiation is, the demonic gift leaves the person confused and directionless. The de demonic gift leaves the person confused and directionless. But God's gift leads and directs a person close to God and to discover the purpose of God. Now listen to me. Remember the example I told you in the beginning, how in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, Apostle Paul multiple times is writing the same spirit. The same spirit gives this gift, the same spirit. So, the subject on which someone is mentoring you is the same teacher. So when the same teacher teaches you, the same teacher teaches you on the same subject comes. Okay, she, uh, th when she comes the next day, she says, yesterday what I taught you, have you gone through it? Have you? So the same teacher can give you attention and knows your progress, knows where you are going. So when you are under the, under the same tutor, you will have a direction, you will have a purpose. You will know what to, how to be successful, where to go because the same teacher, but on the same subject, if every day different kinds of teacher are coming and telling you this, that, this, that, the next teacher comes, no, not that one, this one, you will be directionless. That is how many Christians have become. They go to one prophet, they don't get solution. They go to another prophet, that prophet says something, no, no, not like this, like that. They don't get solution. They go to another prophet. They are going and they are getting words of wisdom for them but they are directionless in their life because they are going to different tutors having different spirits so different spirits leading in different ways and their life is directionless you are seeking and you are connecting to a demonic gift of wisdom that's why even after you are being ministered with the gift of wisdom words of solution for your problem your life is confused your life is directionless but when God, when a person operates through the gift of wisdom by God, your life will have a direction. You will have peace. You will discover the purpose of God. You will discover the archives, uh, the, the purposes, the mysteries that God has for your life in the archives of God. Are we understanding? The demonic gift of wisdom leaves the person confused and directionless. But God's gift leads and directs a person close to God and to discover God's purposes. If we are here until now, say Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay. Amen. Okay. Okay. The third difference, the third difference, the demonic gift puts the person in bondage and traps them in a circle to seek for more rituals. But God's wisdom delivers a person and shifts them into a new season to journey with God. Let's, let me show you. The demonic gift, God's gift. When you, you are ministered by a demonic gift of wisdom, what that, what that gift will do, what that gift of wisdom will do is draw, start to draw a circle around you. You use the soap, and you did that, you went to the ocean for bath and out of 100% of, of, of your debts, 10% got nullified, 90%. And then you go to the prophet and you say, prophet, you know what? Yeah, 
that worked for, for me, but uh, all my debts are not nullified, only 10% of it. The prophet will say you, it's tell you, you need to do something else. He will introduce to another, you to another ritual. So, slowly, slowly, what the demonic gift of wisdom is doing to a person is putting the person in a prison. Again and again, it will make you seek that, that power, that gift. Again and again, you have to go to that gift, go to that gift. I was ministering, we were, me, my, my mother were ministering to a Hindu family. They are not Christians, but we have ministered the gospel to them, told them about Jesus Christ, asked them to leave idol worship, but it's their choice. But however, whenever they are sick, we minister to them and God heals them by his mercy. So again, this lady fell sick and very sick, very, very sick. And she did not contact us for a long time. When we got in contact with her, asking her, oh, what, where were you? And she was crying because she was very sick. And then after inquiring, we found out because she was sick and she did not felt like coming, approaching us. She went to a, to a Muslim priest. She went to a Muslim priest. And the Muslim priest introduced her to some words of wisdom. The Muslim priest told her, take this black threads and tie it on your hands, on your legs and on your neck. And not only you, because the Muslim priest told her that I see this sickness after you, it will come in your husband and your daughter also. And all of you will die if you don't listen to what I say. <laughs> that is how prophets are deceiving people. Now, I am talking about a Muslim person, but that is how many Christians prophet talk. So, so you tie this thing on your hand. So, is there any message in that? No, it's a ritual. That is what the word of wisdom in the demonic. So, they, they tied it. They tied it. And uh, the family tied. And after she came back, you know, there was the problem in her stomach and all. The, she was not able to pass tools. It became worse. The problem became worse. And so, what they think? No, 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 this person only. They went a second time, second visit. He also took some money. They went again for the second time, the second visit to the person. The person said, oh, it became worse, but this ritual worked. That's why it became worse. And uh, someone has done something on you. To break that, you have to do a perform a second ritual. Take something. So she, when she was, we, I and my mother made them to, to tear off those black threads from their body. No, no, no. If we tear the black thread, he told us that something worse. I told her, if you trust Jesus, the God I am preaching to you about, you tear those black threads and you put your trust on Jesus. Then they listened and they tore off those threads and they threw off all the occulting things and the things that the person gave and, and she got healed. She got healed. She visited the doctor. The doctor said this and that and many negative I said, don't believe that. She got healed after that. Otherwise, she was on a... So what, what does the demonic gift of the word of wisdom, it will make you go to the person again and again. Again and again. Again and again. You have no direction. What, what is happening to you is you, you are getting into a circle. You are getting into a bondage. You are trapped. You are trapped. You might see temporary results, but it's not all. You are trapped. But God's gift of wisdom sets a person free, delivers the person and sets a person on in a new season to journey with God. Hallelujah. These, now, these are the three differences that you have to look for when a person gives you a word of wisdom. Are we understanding? And I believe it will easily help you to discern. If the, if the pastor tells you, do this, and then after seven days, come back to me, there you spot out. He's not operating in God. He's trying to encircle you in a bondage. Word of wisdom that God gives is just a word, and through that, you get delivered. Through that, a person finds the solution to the problem. Are we understanding that? The gift of the word of wisdom. Let me end here. Let me end here. Hallelujah. The gift of the word of wisdom and then tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, Sunday night, I will continue on the gift of the word of knowledge. And then we will go to the gift of faith, the gift of healings, the gift of tongues and uh, the gift of discerning of spirits. And in every 
gift i will explain you like i explained you what is the gift of the word of wisdom many many believers don't understand what are these gifts explain you what is the gift and then differentiate it between from the gift that comes from the devil and the gift that comes from god let us end here hallelujah and let us pray god is releasing revelation knowledge god is releasing releasing the knowledge of the things of god things of heaven so that his people can be empowered with power from on high with the gifts that he gives hallelujah god is releasing those words in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth father i pray lord hallelujah i pray lord for your people lord that your people will understand the seriousness of i know the seriousness lord of the teaching this series that i am taking lord and they will give your lord that they would be delivered they might they might know O oh lord the knowledge that comes from you lord with which they will be able to dissect and discern and save their lives from wolves lord save their lives from demonic spirits and not not only that but they will be able to desire lord i pray that even as i'm teaching on these gifts that even as i'm teaching that you will start to holy spirit give desires to people to seek these gifts let your people have the gift of the word of wisdom in the mighty name of jesus christ Christ, O oh Lord, Hallelujah! Even as we embark upon the series, Lord, the next uh, few meetings, Lord, on the other gifts, Lord of the Holy Spirit, Father, I pray that you will speak to your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, Hallelujah! Rabo yam balto razafata ya veto, ravalahal zial taraba. I just want to thank you for this time, Lord, Hallelujah, Lord. I cover all all your people, their families, Lord. And even those who are not your Lord, I cover all of them with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. The coming, even the coming meetings, Lord, this weekend we give into your hands, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you will touch their lives in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. We make this prayer. And we all we all shout, Amen.